Hello Nuggets. Uh, so we're unpacking, that way, packing for uh, the London trip we leave today. Uh, so I wanted to add a, a couple of little New York moments. Um, so one of them is I walked 50 miles in that week. Um, amazing, right? It's, for me, it's amazing. So a huge amount of walking. I was really into it as well. I was like, I got to fucking walk, got to do something, got to walk. So I'm really into the walking. So one of the walks I took was I took the ferry, the East River Ferry, and it basically goes all the way down, um, or it crosses over to Brooklyn. It goes down the coast, one of the edges, the coastlines. I guess it's the coast, yeah, of Brooklyn, along the docks of Brooklyn. So you can see back across at Manhattan. It's beautiful, right? It's freezing cold, but it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and then it gets to the Brooklyn Bridge and then it cuts back over towards Wall Street. Well, I got off at the Brooklyn Bridge and I thought, I'm just going to walk back. I'm going to walk to Soho from here. It's a nice long walk, you know. So um, I walk across the Brooklyn Bridge, get to the other side, um, and I go to get, I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop into a place. So standing outside of this place, just on the other side of the Brooklyn Bridge, is... This guy in a full business suit, and I mean it was his business suit. It wasn't a guy walking into, you know, Goodwill or wherever and just like saying, I think that will fit me. This was cut for him. It was clearly his suit, right? Or it was just whatever. It was in really good condition. So it looked like he had bought that suit. He had a shirt on, you know. He had, it was a nice top and everything. Here's the thing. He was perfectly clean shaven. He had nice hair, pushed back. He had a little cut from shaving, like he'd shaved that morning, and he had a cut with a little piece of paper on it. You know how you put paper on if you, if you, to stop a shaving cut? So he had a little bit of shaving cut on it, and then I looked down, and he's got filthy, mud-caked boots on his feet. No laces, right? And his pant legs are a little bit muddy around the bottom, and one of them is ripped, just at the bottom is ripped. And he has no tie on, and his shirt is loose right and he's a little bit red looking a little bit flustered and he's standing on the street corner saying can i get a couple of bucks can anyone give me a couple of bucks it was like fucking dan Aykroyd in trading places that's what the image that popped into my head that is such a new york image like what the fuck was that guy's story and i went to get something to eat i came out and he gone it bugged me but uh, i should have said something asked him but only in New York. And I, I, I know that's a cliche, but only in New York. I mean, we have, we have terrifyingly, we have like, I think, 60,000 homeless in Los Angeles. Let that sink in. Uh, we have an enormous, chaotic problem in Los Angeles. And I know everyone uses that kind of language about everything all the time. Like, the, this is the worst it's ever been. It really is a massive problem. The, even the police out here are starting to say, like, we need to deal with this. It's exploding. Crime's exploding. It's like... Fucking society is breaking down in parts of Los Angeles. 60,000 homeless people on the streets. If you go downtown, miles and miles, blocks and blocks rather, of homeless of Skid Row. Just everywhere. Tents. Absolutely everywhere. It's horrible. And then I drive back to my lovely little house. Um, so there, we have a huge variety of people here. We have drug problems. We have mental issues. We have just down on our luck stories and all that. But in New York, are you going to see what looks like a... Wall Street businessman. Even with the, it was the little cut, the shaving cut. I could imagine just sitting there going, oh, oh God, I've got to get that. Okay. Can you lend me a couple of bucks, please? Anyway. Amazing, amazing moment. Um, what was the other one? Okay, so the other one was I went to the Tenement Museum. I'd heard about this place and I wanted to go. It shows what life was like in... Um, uh, in the 18 and uh, like 1880 I think it is through to about 19 well actually the building didn't close till 1984 I think it was or 85 but really the tenement building shows the squalor or the life of between 1880 and 1930s around about there you know the Great Depression and before World War One and stuff so I go there so it's all tours. You don't walk around the museum. It's a building, and there is a tour guide who takes a group of 15, 20 people, probably about 10 people, actually. They can't fit much more than that. And there are multiple tours, so you can go to different levels, and they'll say, this is what it was like to work in a sweatshop. This is what it was like to live here in the 1880s. This is what it's like, so on and so forth. And I don't know which one to pick. 
right? There's ones that have actors on them as well, by the way, actual people who pretend to be people living there and you talk to them. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Um, I know which one to pick. So I'm looking through. They've got five tours. And I go to the woman at the front desk, start of the day. So no reason for her to be moody. <laughs> it's the start of the day. She's had a coffee. Um, and I say, hey, I'm really looking forward to this. Well, uh, I didn't say that. I said, hey, got any suggestions about which tour I should pick? And she says, whichever tour you pick is the best tour. It's fucking aggressive right away. I'm like, oh, uh, well, that, that's not very helpful. Can you tell me, can you advise a tour? And she said, just pick a tour. I'm the first person in there. Literally, that's, the, that's her first interaction of the day with a customer. Fucking New York, man. It blew my mind. So I say, well, I'll just look it up online. Just ignore me, went back to whatever she was doing, which is basically just shuffling papers. All she did was take money and give tickets. It's not like she had an enormous wealth of work to do that day. So I step to the side, kind of giving her the evil eye, and I go through, and I basically, I pick up my phone and I go, what is the best tour to take on the Tenement Museum? <laughs> Write it down, right. Uh, and that's, I've, I don't use Siri or Google or whatever, so I actually recorded that into the search bar and then press search. Might be that's the same thing. Now that I think about it, that's probably still going to those spies. Anyway, um, and it comes up and it says, Hard Times is one of the best ones. So I go, oh, uh, one for Hard Times. She goes, no thank you, no nothing, just gives me the ticket. Wait over there. They'll call you when it's ready to start. You can sit down and watch the video if you want. She said that very nicely. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just so rude, man, all the way through. Um, I was also a little bit thrown off by the fact that everyone at the Tenement Museum, and actually I saw a few people in New York in this, were wearing name badges, and then underneath the name <laughs> was just three words. And those three words varied by person but in the case of like our tour guide whose name was i think sally or something i don't remember hers said she her hers and then there was another guy and his said he i think his just said he his actually but now for some reason they feel it necessary to show which pronoun which gender pronouns or gender fluid pronouns whatever the fuck it is now that are appropriate to use with those people. That's fucking ridiculous. What is wrong with this society that we feel we need to educate? This was a woman I was talking to. And if it was transgender, if, it was a, if, if that person was a man who transgendered into a woman, I'm still looking at a woman. I don't need, I don't need to know your backstory. I'm just going to call you she. Or I'm just going to call you by Sally. I'm just going to say, hey, Sally. <laughs> I'm not going to go, Sally, how are you doing today, my man? I mean, I'm just going to fucking call you with whatever you're clearly tr putting out into the world. This is the person I am. All right, fine. Let's just fucking move on with it then. It's this, the gender pronoun thing, which I saw in a few places. Where else did I see it? I think I saw it at the Hayden Planetarium as well, which is awesome, by the way. Really cool place. Um, just blew my mind. Like, you know, I think... I always thought that in California we were maybe at the more extremely woke, I use that word with, with disgust, but the woke end of um, social justice or social correctness and political correctness rather. And, um, but I guess in New York it's very prevalent too. I don't know why the fuck you need that. We also saw, while we were walking along, we saw a store, a store called Fluid, P-H-L-U-I-D, and the tag above the score, the, the, the poster above the store said, the world's first gender fluid clothing store. And I was with Laura at the time, and I was like, look at that. <laughs> it just made me laugh. Why do you need one of those? Just wear the fucking clothes that you like. If it's a dress, wear a dress. If you're a chick and you want to wear a fucking jeans and a lumberjack and dungarees or whatever the fuck you want to wear, just wear. Who cares? But the worst thing is I pointed at it and Laura looked at it and went, oh my God, those clothes are disgusting. And they were the worst clothes. They were like awful fucking style at all. No fashion whatsoever. Their entire selling point was for some people who feel that they're being so oppressed because the clothing stores don't represent them. They're going to go to this world's first gender fluid store. As New York too. 
Oh my God. What else is there? Okay, here's another one. So I go to pick up my wife at the end of her class. It ends at three o'clock. It's in Midtown. So last year's at like 59th Street, 54th Street. So I'm standing outside waiting for her and I'm smoking, I'm vaping, right? And uh, it's not that cold, so I'm enjoying it and I'm watching, you know, it's a people watching city, right? And this, the same building I'm waiting for my wife to come out of, this old lady comes out. She's probably, I think she might have been about 90. She was like ancient, right? And with her is a 60 something woman, a younger woman. The older woman can't walk i mean she can but she's very very difficult very slow she's very lively and very talkative and and like adorable and like just like intense and you can feel that i felt she was very present right and in it and funny and quirky and you know and she's talking to them and saying well come on let's go i gotta get that no don't forget to call her. she's and she's the younger woman's just like yeah, yeah nodding at her and then hails a cab so a cab comes over and it's a big suv cab and a taxi and the old woman walks up to it and gives her cane or puts her cane in the, in the taxi and then tries to climb up and she can't get up. And the, the 60 year old woman is next to her holding her arm and kind of trying to help her up and she can't get into the fucking cab and the cab driver's not getting out. The cab driver's just doing this. Just sitting there watching that. Yeah. It's your problem, not mine. So I'm standing there and I walk over, I have my backpack on and my little combat jacket, my little green jacket. And I walk over and I say, uh, do you need some help? And the 60 year old woman, I'm coming from that side, did this. Just like fucking war face on, right? But the old lady went, oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And she's like, you know, yeah, will you help me? So I hold her elbow and I kind of small of her back, I'm very cautious, obviously. And we just kind of gently lift her in and she goes in she slides away she says thank you so much and i think i say no problem and i walk back stand outside the building i turn around to take my position and watch the street again and i'm watching the sliding door of the taxi closed as the 60 year old woman who was closing the door i'm not kidding you did this and then closed the door she said fuck you to me no idea why i did a really nice thing but she just like and I was like, what did I do? Did I do something there? I didn't even react. I was so shocked. I didn't say fuck you back or I didn't do whatever. I was just like so confused by that interaction. Like, what, what the fuck did I, I don't understand. And then I started painting these images in my head like, oh God, maybe she was going to kill the woman there and I fucked up her plan. Or I don't know what it was, whether she thought I was homeless I mean, I saw a homeless guy in a business suit, so maybe she looked at me and I look a little rough, right? It's like fat bloke in a green jacket and a backpack helps you. Maybe that's a hustle. Maybe for some people they have a hustle, right? And they're like, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I get a buck? But I clearly I didn't do any of that. I just went up, I helped her in. I went, thank you. She said, thank you. I went, no problem. And walked away. That was the end of the interaction. So why did this woman feel the need to look at me in the eyes, closing the door? And she goes, and then close the door. New York. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you go in there, man, put your fucking armor on. Seriously. Put your war paint on. Get ready. Get ready for the attacks that are bound to come. All right. There's another New York story. I got more. I don't know. Oh, ferry. Ferry rope's great, actually. Ferry rope is great. Great. Pizza's great. Okay, I have to say, you know, New York pizza, I was always like, ah, bullshit. You know, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure it's good, but we got a couple of good places in LA. We really don't. I think the difference is that the pizza in New York, everywhere you go is good. It, or everywhere you go is at a level that would be considered very good, at least in Los Angeles. Like the little $1 a slice, $2 a slice stores, fantastic pizza. You know what I mean? So, however, the hot dog thing is all bullshit. You can ignore that about great hot dogs. No, they're not. No, they're fucking not. You want a good hot dog? Go to 7-Eleven. It's just as good. Or if you're in LA, go to Pink's. Way better than any of that. You know, Grace Papaya is pretty good, but it's not that good. You know, it's just like a dodgy dog. I mean, it's, you know, whatever. Anyway. All right, if I think some more, if I think of any more, I do have one more. But if I think of more than one, I'll uh, give you another update. Other than that, I'm off to London. I doubt if I'll do any videos. I might see you in four days. Maybe I will. Ooh.